Just one year ago, these sidewalks were completely empty. Then all of a sudden these orange bikes started showing up. And then all of a sudden some yellow ones popped up, some blue ones, and soon the whole sidewalk's just packed with all these little bicycles. Suddenly riding a bicycle in China was trendy again. This is China and this is their massive bike sharing program. The biggest difference between a bike sharing program in North America or in Europe is that in China you can leave the bike anywhere, in any public space. You don't have like a dock to put it on, it's dockless they call it. Um, so people just leave them on the sidewalk, just anywhere, any public space, outside malls, outside uh, these are business centers here. So here's how it works. I have an app on my phone for this company, Oppo. And I just open up the app. And basically I scan that code right there. And then either I can unlock it with Bluetooth through my phone, or I can just get a number and type the number in. I don't know why I hide that, but boom, unlocks. So now it'll track where I ride. It'll track how long I ride. When I'm done, I lock it up and I pay for it all through my phone. It's so easy, it's quick. You can use GPS to find the closest bike to you. Uh, and the best part is it's super cheap. It's like 15 cents for a half hour, something like that. Which makes you think, like, how are they making money off of this? At one time there was about 30 different companies offering bike sharing. Uh, it's dwindled down a little bit, but there's still a ton, a ton of competition. And that helps keep the prices down. Another way that they competed was to just get more bikes out. So they just loaded the streets up with bikes and not all of them were getting used obviously, but they just wanted to have more out there because it's, it's advertising. Plus, if you're looking for a bike and you know the choice is Mobike or Ofo and there's a Mobike there, obviously you're going to take the Mobike one. Mobike actually claims they were the first to do this. They were the first ever company for dockless bicycles. That's them there. And um, apparently there's over a million of these, these bicycles across China now. And then there's Ofo, the company that I'm riding right now. They just recently managed to raise $450 million. Uh, I'm gonna get hit by a car if I'm not careful here. Uh, $450 million they managed to raise. Uh, so right now they're valued at over a billion dollars. So why are these companies investing so much money into these bike sharing programs when they're not bringing in that much profit. You see like a company like Uber, the more drivers they have, the bigger their business is. The more drivers, the better the service is gonna be. And basically the more money they make. But with bike sharing, the more users means more bikes. Your company is gonna get worse as you expand. And more bikes, more problems. Here's a guy collecting over bikes, ones that need to be repaired. Uh, so it, it just doesn't really work that well as a business because as it expands, it gets more expensive. But that being said, the real value is in data collection, data mining, the information that we're giving these companies when we ride the bikes. Um, back in May, uh, there's a big holiday in China. It's a three or four day weekend. And Mobike put out a report after it saying, Oh, here's some information about how people were traveling in China over this holiday. Um, basically, Mobike usage in Shanghai dropped, and usage in Hainan or some other tourist places, they went way up. On the surface, the report didn't really have that much information, but it did tell you some things if you look deeper into it. For example, Mobike knows what sex you are, who you're traveling with, where you're going, even down to how fast you're moving. And all this information is valuable to people who want to know how people are spending their leisure time. That's the real value. Because over time, the more bikes used, that, it, that information is just going to be more accurate. And it's, it's really what Mobike and Ofo are in the business of. It's not about renting bicycles, getting people to use bicycles and make money off of that. It's data intelligence and selling that information to advertisers so they can more accurately advertise to people and so they know where to advertise at certain times of the year, certain times of the day. The winner of this bicycle race will be the company that collects the most data over the period of time that they can stay open for. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, everybody seems to be behind it. The people are using the bikes like crazy. 
The government has introduced laws to support them, to keep them, you know, keep people from breaking them. Uh, and, you know, it, it's promoting exercise, it's, uh, whoa, bud. And it's, um, it's probably good for the environment. Um, but one of the problems is all these like bicycle graveyards are popping up in all the cities. Um, so, I don't know. I, I think it's great for me. It's, it's really handy when I was traveling. I use this a lot and I found it really useful. Um, get off a, a bus, where's my hotel? Oh, I could jump in a taxi or I could just jump on a bicycle and ride there myself or if I wanted to tour the city. I think that's it for today. Uh, stay tuned for more videos about China, uh, interesting things like this, and I hope you liked it. I also am doing a food video on Thursdays. Uh, it's a new series that I'm starting all about the gastronomy of Chengdu. Uh, so hopefully we'll see you then. All right, I'm all done. So I can literally just push the bike in this pile of mess here and uh, kick the man down. Good, easy, easy. And slide this. Done. That's it. Check my phone. So it cost me two RMB in total. That's for 56 minutes of riding. That's it. You paid. Just got to push one button.